Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI Tools. This is a series of recorded demos highlighting the powerful capabilities of combining Maximo with Cognos. With the latest Maximo 7.6 release, each Maximo client is directly entitled to the powerful Cognos BI products which can extend the depth of analysis you can perform on the vast amounts of Maximo data we collect. To utilize Cognos, however, you first need to prepare a metadata or a pre-joined collection of objects representing the Maximo database. You could do this in Cognos FM or Framework Manager, Manager but that's an extremely time-consuming process. An alternative is to utilize Maximo's integration framework, which can greatly streamline the time it takes to prepare and maintain a Cognos metadata later, layer. So in this series of recordings, we'll go through the steps to do that as shown here. First, we'll create a simple report object structure in Maximo utilizing the integration framework. In the next demo recording, we'll review the report object structure cardinality and a few of the business rules. Then we'll publish that report object structure to Cognos and we'll create a Cognos report utilizing that. And then in the last few demos, we'll access a report object structure in Cognos Framework Manager so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll talk about the different data restrictions that are available. So to recap what we're doing at a very top level, this is our architecture with Maximo and Cognos. We have three main components. We have the Maximo 7.6 environment. We have a separate Cognos 10 to 1 BI server. And then our Maximo database is our third major component. So again, what we're going to focus on here is the metadata publishing utilizing Maximo's integration framework. So to break that process down at a lower level, what we're going to do in today's demo is create the report object structure. The report object structure is a collection of Maximo objects which we join together via Max relationships. We're going to create a very simple one here. We're going to have a parent of asset and two child objects, one for work order and one for companies. So we'll go into the integration framework and create this and then in the next demo we'll talk more about the business rules and the cardinality. So let me switch over here to Maximo and I'm already signed in and what I'm going to access first is the integration object structure application. Now when I come in here I'm going to see a large collection of objects and the objects basically have three purposes. One is they're used for migration manager, two is they're used for integration to import and export data, and the third use is the report object structures. And you can highlight on the saved query to get a listing of the report object structures delivered to you out of the box. Well, let's create a new one, and I basically create a new record. You may choose to name these whatever you like. I always like to start with the RAP uh, to for the connotation of reporting in my name just so I'm always sure what I'm doing and I'm just going to call this asset demo and my description will be asset demo report object structure well I think I'll just take that off let me just call it asset demo consume by what is this consume by as I mentioned there's a number of uses for object structures we're going to use this for reporting anything that we do with Cognos for report act object structure is reporting what application? What is my parent application or my parent object? As I mentioned, we're going to create this for asset. So let me grab the asset object. All these other fields here are for the other types of object structures, so you don't need to do anything else. If I try to save this at this point, it's not going to let me do that because it's saying I need to come down and define what that top level object is. So let's do that click new row down here. What is my top level object? Again, it's asset. In most cases in Maximo, the application has the same um, object name, although we always have some of those ones that are a little bit different. And I'm just going to call this asset details and I'm going to save that. 
So now I can save it. There's a look up here under the parent object so you can start to see what that hierarchy is. So let me cancel that and let's start to build this here and add our first child object. As I mentioned, we're going to do that to work order. Work. Oops. Yeah, I was doing that right. Work order. I sometimes always say, is it work order or woe track? It's work order, so let's grab that. What's my parent object? And this is very simple. I only have one, but as you start to build multiple objects with child and grandchild relationships, that can definitely change. Let's give it a name. Work order. Now, relationship. This is the most, or I think, one of the most important fields as you build a report object structure. What is the relationship between my parent asset and my child of objects? Well, this really nice lookout, lookup goes out to the Max Relationships table and shows you everything that's available. And you can see there's some that are very, very complex. Well, in my case, I just want this one here, my all work order relationship. So I'm going to join asset to work order on asset number and site ID. So I grab that uh, relationship. Uh, my object order, I don't really need an alternate key, but I do need to pay attention to these fields down here. What is my cardinality? So that's the relationship between work order and asset. In this case, I can have multiple work orders associated with an asset, so the cardinality is multiple. In some cases, I may have a single relationship. And if I don't define the relationship, it can be undefined. And in that case, we can say or we assume that it's a multiple relationship. And then database join. Does every asset have to have a work order? In this case, it's no, so we leave that fail blank. Let's add one more. And in this case, we said we were going to grab the companies object. So let me filter on companies. Let's grab companies there. What is my parent? Again, it's the asset. It's not the work order. What is the description? And I should have mentioned this is the description that your users are going to see in Cognos, so make sure it's something that they recognize. So I could just call it Companies Fields. What's my relationship, again, between asset and companies? Well, I just want to go here where I'm looking at org IT and my company. My cardinality. This one, it's undefined, but in this case, we know it's single. A asset only has a single manufacturer and the database join is not required because I may not have put that information in the object structure or in the uh, asset application. So let's see what we've built here. We've built a very simple hierarchy, asset, work order, and companies. So this means that this is my report object structure, or ROS, and when I publish this to Cognos, my users will be able to select fields from these individual objects. Before I do that, I want to highlight one very, very important action here. It's called the exclude include fields. As you build your report object structures, you will notice that there's many attributes or fields within each individual object that you may ne not necessarily want to expose to your end users when they're creating reports. So example, something like an asset UID or as I navigate through the different fields within the individual objects, you don't want them exposed. You want to really present something very clean to your users and your developers. So it's a best practice that you utilize this action, select the fields within each one of the objects that you, again, do not want exposed to your end user. So again, for example, that was a great one that I passed by, external ref ID. Who's going to display that in their report? Probably nobody, right? So just clean it out. Don't pass it over to Cognos. It takes just a few minutes to go through each one of these and to clean them up. So again, make sure you clean those up before you um, publish this report object structure to Cognos. That's a best practice. So with that, what we've done here again is we've create, come into the object structure app. We've created a very simple report object structure, asset work order and companies. 
We've no noted what the cardinality is, the database join, and then I highlighted the best practice recommendation of exclude and include fields. In the next demo, we'll go through the report object structures in more detail and we'll look at the cardinality field and the max relationships again in greater detail. Thank you so much.